Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, how are you, Blue Monday? Got to work, plan to sleep all day. Well, there we are. There we are, 2016, before you know it. Well, all I can say is I'm glad the holidays are behind us. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed them. I prefer working to uh, whatever, everyone to each his own. Some are not home yet. I'm amazed at how many people don't work in America. I don't mean the welfare class. We all bash them every day. I mean, how many in the middle class don't work? And how many retirees don't work? Now, many retirees complain about the poor and about the immigrants who are sucking the system dry. And they'll get mad at me when I say, well, wait a minute now. Hold on. I worked all my life. I'm entitled to retire at 55 and do nothing the rest of my life. Really? You think that's part of the human condition? Are you sure of that? Look back in history and see how many people stopped working at age 55 and then just went on vacations. It's unheard of. So you see, we're all part of the problem. Now, the biggest part of the problem, as you well know, are the first family. The two grifters just came back from another expensive, fat vacation in Hawaii. It seems interesting to me that as he gets smaller, she gets larger. I don't know what that's about. He keeps losing weight and she keeps, well, the opposite. I mean, I... I'm just a social observer, but there is a video from AP of the first family waddling and dashing up the steps of Air Force One after a, I don't know how many luau's she must have packed in on this trip. Anyway, it seems to me that Marie Antoinette had nothing on the first lady. And we've seen nothing yet. This year will be a banner year for excess, as you well know, and attacks upon everything we hold dear to us. The phone number here, if you care to join the show, is 855-407-282. And at the risk of offending those of you who don't like me blowing my own horn, may I blow my own horn for a moment because no one else will? This came in 10 minutes ago. As you know, many people listen to this and other radio shows, unfortunately not on terrestrial stations, which I wish you would listen on, because that's the bread and butter of the show. The terrestrial radio stations, the big, big signals that we talk about every day. But many of you listen on iPhones and Android devices, computers, to the growing uh, trend. And that's called streaming radio. Many of you can't get it in some markets. You go on to a website and get it. Well, you may not know this because no one will tell it to you, but it just came in. There's a company that checks on these things, like who listens to the shows on streaming. And one of them is Talk Stream Live. And they sampled 1.7 million homes. 1.7 million devices, in other words, were sampled in the fourth quarter of 2015. October, November, December. And I'm happy to tell you that this show is number one by a land mile. They say that Savage's streaming success captured the top spot for all four quarters in 2015. His massive margin, margins over all of the tour competitors is unparalleled. I have a 27 share. The next is Limbo at 14.1, which, I don't know, says a lot. And I want to thank you for listening to the show. Don't call and tell me how great I am. But I think it's important for you to know that the show is doing very well indeed. And I hope to build on this this year in 2016. And uh, we'll see where that goes. I can't promise you that I'll be on the air in 2017 anywhere. I may decide I've had enough. It's that simple. I may decide that this is it. I may decide this is it. I may decide I've had enough. I may take you through the election and then disappear and never be seen again or heard from again. Or I may not. I have to see how the year goes. But this is a big year for talk radio. It's a big year for myself. And frankly, we don't know what the year is going to bring. Except we have a maniac in the White House who continues to upset the apple cart. He has a vendetta against all things dear to this nation, including the Constitution itself, as you well know. And I would be remiss to tell you that I don't notice these things. 
If you care to join the show, the phone number is 855-400-7282. I'm not ready to go into the full show that I have prepared for you today, and we have so many great headlines. I know that many of you are still warming up for the year. Some of you are not back. Some of you are not listening. The audience is just kind of coming into the tent. Every day when I get on the air, I imagine that there's a gigantic tent, sort of a revival meeting. Big tent. Not so much a stadium. Well, let's turn it from a tent into a stadium. Let's say, no, let's make it the tent, a tent the size of a stadium. And many of you get in early and take your seats and sit down and have a soda or a hot cup of coffee and wait for the show to begin. Some of you straggle in. Some of you are on the outside of the tent saying what's going on in there. I welcome all of you. The show is daily, as you well know, on your local station. If you're listening in Dallas, there's been a program change. I've gone from one signal to another. I'm now on KLIF. If you're listening to me on KLIF in Dallas, you're going to get a special prize today. Any KLF caller gets priority because it's a new station for us. And we'll be giving you copies of Government Zero if you get on. But I want to begin with something that came to me from a listener. He said, Michael, I happen to listen to you New Year's Eve. You were one of the only talk show hosts who came in on New Year's Eve. Even the show broadcasts earlier than that, you know, fabled New Year's Eve slot. You were kind enough to take time out of your vacation, thank God. And you said something on that show that I think you should remember. And that was a story about how struggle has to be overcome to succeed. And it's a short piece from Thursday, New Year's Eve, that I'd like Robert to play right now. I knew if I wanted to climb out of poverty, no one was going to help me out of poverty. I had to do it myself. Buses and subways. and You have no idea the road, how what it is to succeed. You think it was given to me because I'm white? Are you kidding me? I think someone reached down, oh, hello, white boy. Here's a gift for you. No, there was no such thing. This is a nonsense about white privilege, that there's an inside track. And I went, yeah, if you were rich, there was an inside track. That's for sure. Your father got you into colleges you were not I admitted to. They call it a legacy admission, right? You are a moron, but they let you in because your father gave money. Well, I didn't have a legacy admission. I had a slush admission. I was walking, I had a walking walk slush with rubber boots on to the bus. That was the admission I had. Then take a job after school. I'm not complaining. When you're young, you can do anything. You think you can conquer the world, and in a way you can. You can move mountains if you have faith in yourself. And you just keep going and going and going and going and going and going. Nothing stops you. Nothing. Not one. No matter what. And you're going to have a thousand impediments. But the day you think the impediments are put there because it's unfair, because life should be easy, you're finished. You're never going to make it. Nothing will help you. You'll have a resentment factor that will cripple you the rest of your life. You have to expect impediments in everything you, you try to do. I'll never forget when I was 18 years old, I went to a sales seminar in Manhattan from a bunch of con men. I don't know what they were selling. Like a get-rich-quick scheme. You went to some number. You went to... I answered an ads. I sat in the room, and some slick con men, old and young in a the room, they were really sharp. And they were like, they taught you how to sell. I don't know what they were selling, but they gave me a sales book. To this day, I remember what they told. In the sales book, there was a line I'll never forget. It said, remember the sale begins when the customer says no. That has worked for me my entire life. That's 100% true. I was a, look, a timid kid. I didn't know how to sell, but I, you know, if someone said no, I went away. That's, I was even selling a newspaper out or a magazine. Hey, were you liking, uh, I'm having a magazine? No, go away, kid. Oh, okay. Kids, kids are scared. They're, 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 they're insecure. That's what they call kids. You have to learn to put on a shell and make believe you're not scared. But I learned that from them, you know, remember the sale begins when the customer says no. I don't want to be a, you know, uh, that was true even with dating girls, i got to tell you the truth. Am I wrong? What do you think? Every girl, even if she likes you, she's going to say no, isn't she? That's the nature of the boy and girl thing. You know, hey, Judy, would you like to go? Uh, sat uh, uh. No, don't call me again. Oh, okay. The kid hangs up. He's insecure. Moves to San Francisco. That's the last you hear of him. Never again. He's shattered because she said no to him. But the, the sale begins when Judy says no. You got to call Judy ten times till Judy says yes. Just to get you off her back, she'll say yes. Let's say you're an ugly kid with pimples and she's the most beautiful cheerleader. If you keep calling her, just keep calling her. She'll say yes just to get rid of you. 
She figures she'll go out with you just to, to have you stop already. And then she may actually like you. She'll find out, you know, he's not so bad, even though he's ugly with pimples. And uh, he's a conservative. I might just, you never know. <laughs> My New Year's resolution is to move forward on our unfinished business as much as I can. Like and flooding America with cheap for labor for Zuckerberg. That's what this American project is all about. Uh -huh. That's especially true for one piece of unfinished business. Ah. An epidemic of gun violence. Last month, we remembered the third anniversary of Newtown. This Friday, I'll be thinking about my friend Gabby Giffords. Five years right, into her recovery. Off. He's a demonic maniac. He has one goal. Take the Constitution apart one day at a time. He floods the U.S. job market with foreign competition. He skirts Congress once again. He seeks to admit another 100,000 foreigners to work here when jobs are few and labor market participation is very low. It is not in the interest of U.S. workers, especially tech workers. He is doing it only to satisfy the pirates in Silicon Valley and elsewhere in those businesses. He plans to award via executive order work permits to 100,000 foreign, foreign college graduates, including deportable aliens, in order to compete with U.S. workers for jobs. So he doesn't represent the United States in any way. He never has and he never will. He's just a smooth salesman. He's one of the greatest con men in the history of the world. And how he's gotten away without being impeached is only a matter of owning the government media complex and the fact that there is no Republican Party. The Republican Party consists of special interests, as you well know, and it is now a puppet Democrat Party under the tutelage of Quisling o O'Malley, whatever, sorry, I don't even know, is that Ryan? Can't remember the beard. All I know is the beard. It's a myth that there's a Republican Party. Just as there's a myth of cops who are killing young black men. Another great myth of Barack Obama and his insane uh, regime. I have the data. If you listen to these liars in the media and the liar in the White House, you'd think we're in the grip of an unprecedented crime wave wanton murder in which cops go out and randomly gun down innocent unarmed teen blacks just for sport it's a it's a fake narrative put out by the gangsters and the black lives matter movement it's a lie put out about ferguson missouri it's a lie about michael brown it's all a lie i have the data I have the data for you to look at and listen to, but I don't expect you to listen to the data any more than you listen to the true data on global warming, which is another gigantic propaganda exercise. I found something out over this week, as I've known for a long time. So-called progressives or so-called liberals are not interested in what the facts are. They're interested only in naked power, and they will use all means necessary to push their agenda, as you will find out in 2016. And so we have to push back. Let's take a quick call from New Mexico. Jacqueline on KOBE Radio. Fire away, Jacqueline. You're on the air. I just wanted to say that I don't agree with Obama's policy, but I don't think it's fair to criticize him about taking a vacation. If we don't want presidents and their families to take vacations, we need to change the law. Not well, you make it. Well, you make a very interesting point, but you make an interesting point, but it's based upon a false narrative. No president in modern history has taken as many or as costly vacations as this imperial couple. You do know that, don't you? Yes. Well, okay, so that's the issue. And whether you're black or white shouldn't matter. What should matter is the imperial nature of the presidency that has reached a new low or a new high, depending upon which side of the aisle you're on, Jacqueline. This is not a racial issue. This is an issue of excess. Right, and I, and I, th I thank you for listening and being so reasonable. I wish that all people could disagree and be so reasonable as Jacqueline and, as, and I just were. But I used my words very carefully. This is an issue of excess. This couple dumps on everyone and makes believe that they're down with the people. Every time she gives a speech, she brings up how hard her childhood was. Nonsense. She grew up a wealthy, middle, cla a middle class, well-to-do family, and she makes believe she was in the hood of Chicago. It's a lie.